Hey guys, it's Yara. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing great. For today's video, I'm just going to be sharing with you guys um, some things I'm reading right now in God's Word. I don't have a specific topic. So let's just get right into the video. Okay, so what am I reading right now? So I'm actually reading Romans, um, but I just finished John. And it's a chapter in John that I've never seen before. I don't know how, why. I've never really gone through the Gospels, like, personally, like, taking my, my time to go through it, like, from the beginning of, like, the chapter or the book to the end of the book. So this was my first time actually going through each Gospel. Um, and yeah, so I came across John 17, and let me tell you, your girl is shook. Like, I read it, like, maybe, like, four days ago, and I'm still stuck on it. So I just wanted to share with you guys a couple of things I've got from this chapter that are so powerful. Um, but basically, in chapter 17 of John, the Gospel of John, um, Jesus is praying to God. Um, for first, he prays for himself. Second, he prays for his disciples. And third, he prays for believers in general. Um, but I'm going to share with you guys a couple of things. So, verse 4 says, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Um, wow. Wow. This morning, I was praying on the scripture. Um, so basically, God sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. But before he died, he fulfilled his ministry. So he healed the sick. You know, he took care of people. He raised people from the dead. He did miracles, signs, and wonders. Um, he recruited, if that's the right term, um, his 12 disciples. He instructed them. He gave them a bit of knowledge when it came to like how he was going to die he told him that you were going to do greater signs and wonders than i did um and this is just a couple of things i'm mentioning that he did before he died on the cross for our sins and it's interesting because it says here that i've glorified you on the earth but jesus is basically saying god while i was on the earth i glorified you and that statement is so simple but so powerful and so a question to ask yourself is, while I'm on the earth, am I glorifying God? Um, you know, am I glorifying God? It's a good question to ask yourself. It's a question I'm asking myself as well. While I have this short, short, short time on this earth to live my life, will I glorify God? And by God's grace, that's what I plan to do. But for you, is that your desire to glorify God? Or are you here to glorify yourself? Are you here to glorify your friends? So that's a good question to ask yourself. Um, every once in a while or even every day. The next part of this um, verse, it says, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. I made a video talking about, you know, God has a specific plan for your life. It didn't really go into depth, but I did speak about like your role in the church or, you know, the spiritual gifts that the Spirit ha has given or has give distributed to people. I talked about that, um, but I didn't really dive into it. I might make another video where I go even more in depth and when it comes to like God's specific plan for your life. But if you did not know, or if you haven't seen that video, God has a specific plan for your life. You're not just here by accident. You're not just here because God, you know, was like, okay, let me just make this person. No, God has a specific plan for your life. He wants to use you. Whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God, whether you have not given your life to Jesus Christ yet, or whether you are saved, God has a specific plan for your life. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 1, the Bible tells, or the Bible says that God tells Jeremiah, um, before I formed you, I knew you. Meaning that before Jeremiah was formed, conceived in his mother's womb, God already knew him. But the key part, it says that I ordained you to be a prophet. So that's very specific. Not a king, not a, a prince, not a, you know, teacher, whatever. I ordained you to be a prophet and I honestly 100% believe that God has ordained every single person on this earth to be something specific, to do something specific. And so for Jesus, his mission, his purpose was to come on this earth and to die for our sins. Um, but before that, because in this sense, in this chapter, Jesus hasn't died yet. But before that, like I mentioned before in this video, he fulfilled his ministry. So he went, he preached the gospel, he healed the sick. He recruited his 12 disciples. Um, he did signs and wonders. So basically he's praying to God and he's saying, God, I have finished the work that you have given me to do. And that's something that I want to achieve. We live in a society today where Christians are comfortable with where they are. They're married, they have kids, they live in a nice little town, they go to church every Sunday, they worship God at church, they're in ministry, cool. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
But me as an individual, I read Acts, I read Paul, the things that he's talking about, the things that he's witnessed. And I'm like, I want to see people who have died, you know, come back to life again. I want to see someone who only has two arms and one leg to have a leg grow. You know, I want to see these things happen. Um, so therefore, I'm not satisfied with where I am right now. I want to see signs and wonders. I want to see God, you know, really move in this city that I'm in, in this country that I'm in. Um, yeah, I'm not satisfied. And so therefore, I know for a fact that God has a specific plan for me because it says it in his word. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to strive to know what that plan is. But like I said before, there are people who are comfortable in their Christianity. They're comfortable with where they are. They don't really have a desire to see these things. Or if they do, they're not really concerned about it. They're just like, who cares? Whatever. Unfortunately, many people die. Yes, they go to heaven. But they don't get to actually accomplish God's specific plan for their life. Um, which is very interesting, but it's the truth. There's only a couple, a handful of people who actually fulfill what God wants them specifically to do. And I don't know about you, but I want to complete God's specific will for my life. I want to have heaven on earth. Um, I'm not saying your life will be horrible if you don't complete God's specific will for your life, because that is far from the truth. But God wants you to live a life victoriously. But most importantly, to live a life that He wants you to live, His will. And through that, through you accomplishing His specific will for your life, you can reach many people or you can do certain things. Like, for example, maybe God wants you to um, preach in Brazil. And if you, if you do that, so if you listen to God and obey Him, or first of all, if you pray and God reveals it to you, and then you go, and then you meet, let's just say, a guy, um, and you become friends with this person, um, and then eventually you begin preaching the gospel to them, let's just say, and then they get saved. And maybe they become... Um, someone important in the government in Brazil and they are used by God but if you don't go to Brazil probably wouldn't have ever met that person you know what I mean so I'm just saying that God's specific will might seem so like specific to you and which it is but it also it has so many other connections to other people's lives so if you don't do that if you don't fulfill God's purpose for your life then you you can't necessarily do what God wants you to do God can still reach that person that guy but it'll just be in a different way, if that makes sense. Um, same thing with abortion. Like if a, a lady aborts her baby, that child could have been the next president. Maybe they would have been a Christian. You know what I mean? And this is just an example, but it's important to recognize that every single life on this earth is valuable. And God has a specific plan for your life. You're not just here to go to school, get married, have kids, live a life, retire, die. No, there's so much more than that. Maybe God wants you to be a pastor or a pastor's wife. Maybe God wants you to be a missionary, to be a local youth pastor in your church, to, to, to be an evangelist. Maybe God wants you to specifically preach about um, prosperity or specifically preach about getting healed. Or maybe God wants you to specifically preach about having faith. But Jesus, back to the scripture, he fulfilled that. He fulfilled God's specific will for his life. And so my question for you is, are you fulfilling God's specific will for your life? Yes, maybe you're in high school, maybe you're in your university, but after that chapter is closed, what then? So I want to encourage you, whatever position you are in life right now, maybe you just finished high school, maybe you just finished university, maybe you're still in elementary or maybe you're in middle school, or maybe you are actually done school and you're working, whatever it is you're doing, I encourage you to pursue God and ask him, God, why am I here on this earth? What have you ordained me to be? And once you get to know what that is, then you can start to fulfill God's will for your life. So that's just a little snippet of that verse. So I'm actually going to stop in this chapter. I might make a video where I go in depth with this chapter, but there's something else I wanted to mention that's not in this chapter. So I'm going to move on. Um, but... Like I told you guys before, I'm reading Romans right now. I'm really taking my time to just go through each verse, each chapter. And I'm stuck on chapter 1. And there's a couple of things that I've gotten from chapter 1 that I want to share. Okay, so I'll just mention a couple of things. I'm not going to go too in-depth, but let's just see. Okay, so verse 1 says, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. This actually lines up with what I just mentioned before. Paul is basically saying that he's been called to be an apostle. Jeremiah was called to be a prophet. David was called to be a king. 
And so that's so important that you know what God's calling is for your life. Now also these callings are not just self-acclaimed callings like, oh, I want to be a king. No, God spoke to Samuel who then anointed David. God is specifically speaking to Jeremiah. So you live, we live in a world where people call themselves prophets. Like, I'm a prophet. I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm this. I'm that. God is, should be the only one who calls us to do something. Should only be the one who says, you're this, you're that. Don't call yourself a pastor. Don't call yourself a, um, a, an evangelist. Let God be the one who calls you, who's, who declares that you're this, that you're that. Because if you start saying you're this, you're that, it can kind of demonstrate that you're maybe prideful, maybe you're full of it, you want to be something that you're not. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith of both of you and me. Here Paul's saying, I'm going to come so I can impart to you a spiritual gift. But the key thing here is that it's not just him giving, but it's him receiving. He's receiving that mutual faith of his fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes there are Christians who are arrogant. Because they know the scriptures, because they've been saved for years, they think that, oh, I know everything, so I'm like the boss of everyone. But that's so false. I... Um, do know the scriptures. I don't know all the scriptures. I don't know a lot of it, but I do have scriptures memorized. I do have a bit of wisdom. But when I speak to people, I don't try and make it seem like I'm better than them. I encourage them, but what what they learn, with what they experience, with that what they with what they discover in God's word, I'm learning from them as well. Another thing I wanted to mention is so verse 16 says, "For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ." That scripture is so powerful. If you guys don't know 116, 116 is a music group, but it's not really a group. Okay, it's a music group, but they're not like a band or anything. It's just, a, um, so I don't know if you guys know Reach Records, which is, which is basically a Christian label. Um, and under that, they have a group called 116. It consists of Tripoli, who's my favorite, um, Anna Menio, um, KB, Lecrae, um, Tadashi, and the list goes on. But that's their motto, 116, which is the scripture, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And they have several songs that talk specifically about not being ashamed of the gospel. But Paul says, hey guys, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I love, I love that. I love that because well, we live in a world where it's like we're so scared to tell people what we believe in, especially if it goes against the norms. So if you aren't pro-LGBTQ, then you're sometimes afraid to tell people that. Or if you're pro-life, you're afraid to tell people that. But Paul basically is saying here, I'm not ashamed. I might be hated by the world, which is, which is mentioned in the Bible, but I'm not ashamed. Um, people might think I'm stupid, crazy, but I'm not ashamed. I might get persecuted, I might not get my dream job, but I'm not ashamed. And I love that statement because it holds very, very close to me. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. There was a time where I never used to tell people I was a Christian in school. But now I'm declaring on my Instagram, I'm letting the world know that I am not ashamed of the gospel. I would not want to deny God now because when I get to when I die, then God will deny me. You know what I mean? So I have to I have to accept Him. I have to be bold, not ashamed for Him now. So when I'm you know in heaven or when I die, God will say I'm not ashamed of you. Well done, my good and faithful servant. So that's powerful. I'm just gonna stop there. I'm not gonna go in depth. I'm not gonna talk about the scriptures I want to talk about. Um, but I'm thinking I want to make a video about that. But yeah. <sighs> okay. I just want to encourage you as a believer to get into God's word. You have to read God's word. It has to come alive to you. There'll be days where you don't feel like reading God's word. There'll be days where you are so busy, but you have to make that effort to say, God, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to read your word. Now, when you slack, don't just brush it off. You know, you might have some days where you don't touch God's word for whatever reason. That could never happen to me. I can't go a day without touching God's word without reading it. But let's just say it happens to you. Don't just brush that to the side and say, okay, I'll just try again tomorrow or the day after. Pick, Get back up again and say, okay, yes, yesterday was bad. I didn't really go, didn't really go the way I wanted to go. I wasn't reading God's word. But today's a new day and I'm going to put an effort. You have to push yourself. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the devil comes to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. Um... That's the devil's duty. That's what he does. So when you're not in God's word, the devil loves that. He's laughing. He's enjoying that because your flesh is taking control. So you need to be in God's word. I can't stress this enough. Find a book and read it and just take your time. Don't read it for the sake of reading it. 
read it because you want to gain something from it i don't want to do anything that i don't agree with and i don't want to do anything that i'm not benefiting from you know like if i was to to join a club let's just say but i'm not learning from the club it's just eventually or i'm not enjoying it eventually it just becomes a waste of time because it's like i could be using this time to do something else I'm not a Christian because I'm bored. I'm not a Christian because my parents I grew up that way, which I did, but I'm not that's not why I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I'm not a Christian because I want to be close to God. Not at all. Um I had a personal experience with Jesus. I had a personal experience with God where I recognized that hey, the, the word of God is true and I'm on my way to hell. And I don't I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Um but I also I believed in God. I still believe. I believe that His Son died on the cross for my sins, and I'm pursuing this life, this relationship with God until the day I die, if I get to meet Him face to face by God's grace. Um, maybe you're seeking after the truth and you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. You don't know what religion to join. Ask God. Say, God, you know, if you are real, reveal yourself to me. Maybe you're struggling with depression. Say, Hey, God, I'm depressed. Help me out here. Take this depression burden off my chest. God, I'm so sick. I have this cancer in my lungs. Heal me, you know? Ask the Lord to confirm his existence, if that makes sense. Um, and he will do it. Go through God's word and read it. You will never know the truth unless you search for it. I wasn't born knowing this stuff. I, I, I searched for the truth and I found it and I'm pursuing it. I want to encourage you. You can be a Muslim. You can be an atheist, agnostic. You can be a Jehovah Witness, a Catholic. The Lord loves you. He loves you so much. He sent his son to die for your sins. And he wants to have a personal relationship with you. So all you have to do is say, God, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that I've sinned. I acknowledge that I, I, I've not been living for you. Um, regret that. Say, God, I regret living this life where it's just completely full of emptiness. Full of, full of vanity and say, God, I'm sorry. I want to turn to you. Forgive me and repent. Repent does not mean God forgive me and then you just continue living life and you go back and do the same thing over and over again. Repent means that you've changed your mind. You're making a, 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 a U-turn, a 180 degree turn. You're no longer doing the things you used to do. Ask God into your heart um, and I'm 100% sure he will show you who he is. My God is not a God who lies. The Bible says in Numbers 23 verse 19 that God is not a man who should lie. Or I think it's a man who should repent. God is just. He is loving. He cares for you. And he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Maybe you struggle with depression, anxiety. Maybe you feel alone. Maybe you have suicidal thoughts. Take all those concerns and just say, God, I'm pouring out my heart to you. This is what Yara says about you. This is what your word says about you. I've heard people talk about God. I've watched videos of testimonies, but I still I still don't know you personally. I'm just be like, hey God, I want to know you. I want to actually know if you exist. I want to know if you, what your word says is true. And he will reveal himself to you. One day you're going to die. Um, and I don't want you to die and go to hell. That would be a tragedy. Because it's like, what a waste of time. You lived on this earth. Maybe you had a boyfriend, a girlfriend. You had money. You, you had a fun time. And then when you die, you just go straight to hell. Don't wait until you have a near-death experience. Don't wait till you nearly pass out, so you get really, really sick. In order to get right with God, do it today. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Um, so yeah, just wanted to say that. God loves you. He cares for you. I love you, which is why I'm making this video to preach the gospel to you. Um, I'm not doing. I'm not sitting here because my parents want me to sit here. I'm not sitting here because I just. I'm bored. No, I'm sitting here because I, I love God. I have a relationship with God. I'm pursuing the Lord, but I want to use this YouTube channel, this platform, to preach the gospel to someone who maybe who might live in the Philippines, who might live in Sri Lanka, who might live in another part of this world. I can just share a couple of snippets of what I have from God's word and yeah um, also I'm here for you guys I don't want to just be this youtuber girl you watch I want to be your friend so if you ever need someone to talk to you if you're ever struggling with anything um, I'm not your shrink I'm not your therapist but let me know DM me on Instagram I'll talk with you I'll pray for you I'll pray with you maybe um, 
yeah, I want to be here. I want to. I want to be of help. And yeah, that's that's all I really got to say for this video. I hope you're ministered to. Um, share this video with someone you think needs to hear this. And I'll see you guys by God's grace in the next one.